More men have walked on the moon than scored a run against Mariano Rivera in the postseason, mostly because he threw one of the most unhittable pitches ever thrown, the cutter. Others have mastered the cutter, most recently Cy Young winner Corbin Burns. But no matter how dominant it's been thrown, it's not a pitch that's been banned or gone out of existence. Aroldis Chapman was the most feared reliever year after year at one time, so feared that American League All-Star hitters and coaches could only laugh because they knew they had no chance against him with him consistently throwing 103 miles per hour. Imagine you finally have his fastball lined up, then he drops this against you. Pitchers have shown plenty of near unhittable pitches over the year, many which have gotten them into Cooperstown. Some others have found other pitches that were so crazy that they got banned or so hard to throw that they've gone extinct. Before we talk about these pitches, SeatGeek is a sponsor I've worked with for years and they'll let you see the best pitches in the game in person. With promo code BREWPACK, you can save yourself $20 on your next purchase, along with your favorite teams in any sport, concerts, or nearly anything requires a ticket. Link will be in the description and on your screen. There's a few pitches that have been officially banned by Major League Baseball, one being the spitball. In 1920, a player passed away after being hit in the head by one of these pitches. A spitball is in the name. You spit in the ball and rub it in, which sounds kind of... Anyways, pitchers to use tobacco spit or also Vaseline. This altered the ball to move in an odd way. It was banned in two different ways. Once when MLB let two pitchers on each team throw it, and then once again when they let pitchers who were known for their spitballs use it until they were retired. The last legal spitball being thrown in 1933. Pitchers have found ways of using it without being caught since. It may remind you of 2021 in spider tack or other sticky stuff to get a better spin rate on the ball. Something that Manfred and MLB recently came down hard on anyone caught using it. Never used spider tack while pitching. Um... I don't, I don't know, I, I, I don't know if, uh, the emery ball is when you scuff the surface by a rough surface like sandpaper. Unlike the spitball, this pitch was never legal, only kept a secret for a good seven years. The punishment would be a $100 or $200 fine depending on if you pitched in the American or National League back in 1914. Many have been accused and some have been suspended since its official ban. Now that was the emery board that we saw sailing off to the right. right. Now, now were you embarrassed when all of that was going on? Well, no, not really because I didn't succeed suspect what was going to happen. You know, I've been carried there for 12 years and uh, I got thrown out of the game because it was in my pocket. Yeah, but if you didn't suspect anything was going to happen, why did you throw it away? Like that? I didn't throw it away. An embryo board gets wet. Uh -huh. It gets sticky. Uh -huh. And it stuck to my finger. <laughs> stuck just, to your finger and... I looked at it and oh, get that out of here. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> All right. Believe it or not, you can't intentionally hit anyone with your pitch. A pitch that's named the bean ball. This has never been different, except that they were more common 100 years ago when pitchers would take out their frustration by throwing at a opposing batter's head just because they gave up a home run to the previous batter. Even worse, batting helmets weren't worn by the majority of batters. No wonder one of them went to sleep forever. None of these pitches are close to as unfair as the knuckleball, a pitch that even the pitcher had no idea where it was going exactly. The last active one thrown it was Stephen Wright in 2019. The pitch typically moves at around 60 miles per hour with as little spin as possible. Throwing a clean strike, mostly luck. Hitting it with solid contact, mostly luck. R.A. Dickey had a 15 year career and even won a Cy Young with his knuckleball on the Mets, while Tim Wakefield finished a 19 year career with two World Series in Boston. Only three pitchers who relied heavily on their knuckleball are in Cooperstown, Phil Necro being the most modern name, even being nicknamed Nuxie. The rarity, and at this point no longer exists in pitch, is blamed by scouts relying too heavily on the radar gun, pitching coaches not have enough experience to coach it, and managers don't respect the pitch. All said by former pitchers. And bless the catchers who had to catch this pitch. Bob Uecker would say the only way to catch a knuckleball is to wait until it stops rolling and pick it up. 60 miles for a major league pitch is slow, but it'll look like a Nolan Ryan fastball compared to the EFIS pitch. There's nothing fancy to this pitch. You lob it. Me and you can go outside or inside, but your mom won't like that, and throw it with no practice. The point of it is to have a batter ready for 95 and you drop 40 in there. Hall of Famer Ted Williams was downfounded seeing the pitch back to back, saying a little girl could hit that pitch, but you had to provide all the power yourself. The Red Sox lost the 1975 World Series due to Ephus pitch letting the Reds back into Game 7 with a two-run shot. 
Anyone can throw an EFIS, so it will never be extinct. Even a few active pitchers like Granke, Kershaw, and Darvish have used it in their careers. But personally, I just wouldn't throw a lob to these guys. Here's the payoff. A floater to Bonds, and he hits it high. He hits it deep, and it is up here. 1-0 to Aaron. Another one is swung on, hit high in the air to left. White back, looking up. That ball is gone. Speaking of Clayton Kershaw, he's a first ballot Hall of Famer once he decides to retire. A curveball is thrown by a lot of guys, but the 12-6 is mastered by Kershaw, but was thrown best by arguably the greatest pitcher of all time, Sandy Koufax. Barry Zito's 12-6 was widely considered the best pitch in baseball for a brief time. With Adam Wainwright's recent retirement, the 12-6 is another pitch that's becoming more and more endangered. Changeups are common, but there's a couple of variations in them that aren't used as much. Trevor Hoffman, who many would say is a top three reliever of all time used a pitch called a palm ball a pitch that helped him save 601 games other hall of famers like roy holiday satchel page and jim palmer used it during their careers but in today's game the screwball is more common also known as the airbender which is 2020 rookie of the year devin williams nickname because you guessed it he throws a screwball his pitch is so unhittable that in his rookie season he gave up only one hit when he threw his pitch the brewers believe in his screwball so much that they traded josh shader to make williams the closer in milwaukee the forkball is one of the riskier pitches to throw as it can cause very serious injury and even when thrown correctly can limit your pitch limit by a lot it's hard to be rarer than the knuckleball but the forkball may be even more endangered if not already extinct. There hasn't been a true forkball pitcher in more than a decade. Newest Mets starter Kodai Singa could bring it back with his invented pitch that he calls the ghost forkball. But for the most part, the forkball has been overtaken by its cousin, the split finger fastball. MVP Shohei Otani uses a splitter as one of his strikeout pitches. Tiger's Casey Mine has an excellent one, and flamethrower Aroldis Chapman has developed one late in his career. A number of these Hall of Famers have come up with their own unique pitches to get batters out for 100 years, while others have mastered what others made. But sometimes, it doesn't matter how well you throw a pitch, you're just going to get beat.